But let's throw some shame towards some other people. Let's do that. For Dumb Belief of the Week, because yeah. I need to project my shame onto them <laughs> for a little bit. Okay. Okay. All right. Dumb Belief number one. This is one that we already talked about earlier in the week, but it's got to be in Dumb Belief, and it's going to go to Gavin Newsom. Remember, San Francisco was magically cleaned up over the weekend. So the commie dictator, by the way, did you see the video going around of Biden calling she a uh, a dictator no yeah and the the video is really of uh secretary blinken's reaction to it and in fact just for fun on the podcast we should i don't know if anyone else is having an issue getting twitter to load these days like i am um let me see biden dictator <coughs> let's see if that comes up we'll take a little fun break <laughs> look at secretary blinken's face uh, as he says this. After today, would you still refer to President Xi as a dictator? This is a term uh, that you used earlier this year. Well, look, he is. I mean, he's a dictator in the sense that he is the guy who runs a country that is uh, a communist country. That is... Blinken's like, oh my God, now I got to <laughs> clean this mess up. Which, hey, props to Biden for calling the China a, a, <clears throat> a kettle. A dictator. For That's calling fine. the spade a kettle. That's. Black. Exactly. He called yes. the, the, the spade a kettle black. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, props it, to that. It was just funny to see um, Anthony Blinken's, which, you know, his his uh, first initial is A. So in my mind, I call him A. Blinken. <laughs> so anyhow, there's Abe. that. Yeah. A. Blinken. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen I, Robin Hood Men in Tights before. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, uh, that's. The reference that happens in my mind when I hear that. Okay, this is um, Gavin Newsom talking about people are alleging that they just cleaned up the city because the commie dictator was coming to town. And he's like, not only is that true, but it's I know true. Folks say, oh, they're just cleaning up this place because all those fancy leaders are coming into town. Um, that's true because it's true. <laughs> but it's also true for months and months and months prior to APEC, we've been having different conversations. Not only is it true, it's, it's but true. it's true. And should it be dumb? Because this is one of the few times where he told the truth about something. You know? Yeah. So, and that gets him into Dumb Bleep of the Week? I think the fact the that truth. they cleaned up yeah. for the dictator. And the fact that he, I mean, you do have to say something about him openly admitting the fact that, yeah, we let this city just run amok with poo on the streets up until the point that Xi Jinping was coming to town and then we cleaned it up mm -hmm. and you guys called us on it and you're right. That's what happened. Yeah. I could have done this or they could have done this. The mayor could have done this for the people who live here and pay the taxes that we just use to clean it up. We could have done this the whole time, but instead we had to do it right now. So we would look better for people that were coming to town. Uh, so that is dumb bleep number one, Gavin Newsom. Honestly, I mean, it <clears throat> seems like he took accountability. But, and that's all you can ask. He didn't for. really take accountability. He made the case for why it was the right thing to do to wait and then do it right before someone comes to town, yeah. you know, but, but whatever. Don't bleep number one. So number two, I got to tell you what, I got my house cleaned yesterday because I got family because coming, people to, town are coming to town and it's yeah. not that it was that dirty. Mm -hmm. We weren't living. There weren't homeless people shooting up, but it's not, you know, I'm at your house. Every heroin. Day. There, there, there wasn't homeless people shooting up opiates in this house anymore. I'm at your house every day and it's not as it's not as if I pay you a hundred bucks every day to come to your house and it's just run amok with <clears throat> needles all over the place, mm -hmm. you know, not anymore. And Crushed there's like, pills. there's they're, like, they're poo. Here yeah. and there's yeah. like poo all over the place and stuff like that. And, uh, and you're like, okay, well my family's coming to town. So yeah. now I'm going to clean up the house mm -hmm. before they get here and I'm going to use your money to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what happened, yeah. really. Exactly. Okay, dumb bleep number two. David Hogg. Wrong kid died. That's what I always yell in my head whenever that happens. Uh, David Hogg, uh, he's responding. This is one of those defiant L's, hypocritical posts. His, you know? orange, his orange square didn't really take no, off, did it? No. But he's still going with it. That did not catch on okay. at all. Uh, this is a, in response back in, uh, well... Let me see. Now, oh, this is a recent response to Tim Pool, who says raise the voting age to 30. Which is a response to David Hogg saying. No, this is uh, two, two tweets put together right here for the Defiant L's thing. So uh, Tim Pool says raise the voting age to 30. David Hogg responds and says, when your policies are so itty, you have to change who can vote in order to win. But then also, 
Uh, you go back to June of 2019, David Hogg says, retweet if you support lowering the voting age to 16. Oh. <laughs> uh, because he's been, you know, pushing for the young people are going to make the real social change. And so you got to let them vote. I got to admit, I'm torn on the ideas. Like, I know that realistically right now, it would be better to raise the voting age up to 30. Like, that makes way more sense. But then at the same time, we're like, well, you know, you should be able to uh, drink and do whatever you want when you're an adult and buy a gun and do all do all that stuff, drive a car, whatever. And that's because we, you know, we, and you look at like back in the old days when the country was founded, I mean, look how young some of those people were that were even fighting the revolution and founding the country, you know? Um, are we just accepting that we've kind of regressed a little bit as far as our maturity goes? Mm. Probably a little bit. Yeah. It's just accepting that. I mean, people in their twenties don't know anything. Don't believe I didn't know anything in my twenties. No, I'll tell you that much. Well, does that mean but the then there's something to be, didn't know anything? There's something to be said about, <clears throat> there's something to be said about being able to make decisions as an adult and learning from them because sometimes you don't learn unless you, unless you do. So then are we just going to keep pushing it further and further back? If you think about the founding fathers, they had full-time jobs by the time they were 10. Mm -hmm. So when they were 24, 25, 26, and they were running the country, it was like they had already had 10, 15 years of experience. At the end of the day, what I think would make the most sense, a little bit more controversial, would be just landowners or at least net taxpayers if there's going to be taxes that if you receive money from the things that you vote on, uh, you shouldn't be able to vote to receive other people's money that's stolen from them. Yep. And that actually makes the most sense. And then you could do that at whatever age you wanted because you could say, well, just landowner, landowners or just net taxpayers, if you're going to have the taxes, uh, and that would, if you're going to vote away other people's money, it's got to be the people who have the money that are voting. <laughs> for those things and not the people that are taking the money. Well, then they just give it to so, themselves though, Nate. I mean, come on. They would give their own money to themselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the whole point. <laughs> they would just stop it. Yeah. So, okay, dumbly number 2 is David Hogg, a little bit of hip little bit of hypocrisy. Uh number 3, this came from the group. Thanks for sending this over. Mass murder is a choice. The gun industry made it. They have made the choice for mass murder. I can't remember where this I think this might have been Rolling Stone or something like that. Uh, mass murder is a choice. We have an article here. And Charlie, if you want to read some, I'll read some. The modern firearms industry's mission couldn't be clearer. Profiting off the sales of weapons that can turn lone shooters into mass killers or armed discontents into a homeland security threat. It's weird that the firearms industry's mission Mm -hmm. would be to make firearms that yeah. they then sell to people. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes bad people do things, and yeah. most of the time, good people don't do anything with them. I don't see Sometimes anyone bad people do things. at Bushnell or <clears throat> Springfield or Glock. <laughs> no one in that company is being like, oh, yes, now this one's going to kill all those people at that nightclub we hate. Yeah. That's I probably hope, not what's happening. I hope the right person purchases this one. <laughs> but by even manufacturing these things, that is de facto what they're consenting to. They're they're complicit in the mass murder, Charlie. That's what you have to understand. Documents produced by the industry's top grade group even advise leaning into the panic buying that can follow mass shootings by targeting a market mm. segment. It calls the anxious buyer shorthand for folks who say they want to buy a firearm before it's too late. It's not because of the mass shooting. It's because everyone talks about yeah. banning them afterwards. Yeah. It's because they're worried the government's going to ban them. That's why. The God. That's why the panic buying happens or the anxious buyer happens. The market research directs that assault weapons more frequently targeted for sales restrictions are the best bets for these would be gun buyers. Because they're worried they're going to get banned. And I think about it all the time. Like, I need to go buy some AR-15s before it's too late. I wouldn't even be thinking that if people weren't trying to ban them. De facto, I could end up owning an AR-15 simply because the government is talking about banning them. And you whereas, want to get one before they get yeah, banned. And whereas otherwise, I would just put it off and put it off and probably never buy one. 
And so the only reason I would have an AR-15 yep. is because I'm worried they're going to get banned. Mm -hmm. So that that's the uh, I actually specifically bought a model of an AR-15 that was used. This model was not this exact gun, but <laughs> the model of this gun was used in in one of the mass shootings. And the reason why is because they were talking about banning them, and because it was the same model, it drastically went on sale. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I got it at a, at a big discount. There you go. You got to capitalize on that. Yeah. The mass murder in Lewiston was a tragedy, but not an accident. It is a choice. That's one up in Maine. And it's one that the gun industry made and has doubled down on, pushing tens of millions of massacre-ready weapons on the American public. By the industry's own, industry's own accounting, America's domestic assault weapon arsenal stands at more than 24 million guns, roughly one for every 10 adults, with a record 2.7 million introduced in 2020 alone. I wonder why so many people bought assault weapons in 2020. How many people have died at the hands of an assault style weapon? Let's use their terms. An yeah. AR-15. <clears throat> How many people have died? Or a massacre ready weapon, an MR dub. You know. <laughs> you gotta get you gotta go get those MRWs off the street. How many <clears throat> people how many people do you think of a hundred, two hundred? Let's say it's a thousand. It's not a thousand. But let's say it is a thousand. Okay. Do the math. Twenty four million yeah. guns, a thousand people have died. Statistically, no one has died <laughs> it's, from it's assault very, weapons. It's very low. From assault and guns. the actual number is like a hundred. Right. And actually per year it's like fifty. Yeah. I mean it's that I we're just throw we're just throwing some numbers out here, but it's a very, very small portion of the gun deaths that occur. Half the gun deaths are suicides in the first place. And most of the other gun deaths are from handguns and normal like gang violence and stuff like that. And then you have some of these people who use assault weapons mm -hmm. or whatever. So the Lewiston attack was a logical expression of what gun manufacturers now market assault rifles for deadly domination. The industry pitches battle proven AR platform assault rifles to civilians with imagery of special forces, troops and taglines like core combat use what they use and your mission awaits such slogans dovetail with even more reckless marketing from makers of tactical accessories who pitch gear for your daily gunfight, assault packs, and carrying cases with names like Urban Warfare and even Coffin. <laughs> it's the marketing that does it. Yeah. You just got to take on the marketing. And the video games. Oh, it's not just that, though. This is a male problem, too. Mm. Okay. The industry's alpha male sales pitches promise buyers the power to control your destiny. According to law enforcement records, Card had been haunted by phantom voices, including taunts that he had a small dick. In quotes. In quotes. That's what they said. The Ruger SFAR with its thick <laughs> barrel <laughs> is marketed without subtlety as bigger and stronger where it needs to be. <laughs> That's not just the big trucks mm. that people are buying, okay? Mm. It's the big SFARs. Yes. There you go. They just call it SDE. <clears throat> let me see. Um, I'm trying to... Let me figure out where they start talking about the boom Well, that go back to that one because this is actually true. This is actually true. Assault rifles were never meant for self-defense or hunting. They are bred for infantry warfare and designed to mow down enemy soldiers. Not entirely inaccurate, by yeah. the way. Yeah. Although I've... Like the one time I've gone hunting in the last 25 years, 20 years was with an AR-15. But here's the thing. It's the second amendment's not for hunting or hunting either. <laughs> Self-defense. Yes. But it's also for keeping the government at bay. Yeah. And I'm not going to argue <clears throat> for anything else. No, no, that's what it's for. Yeah. I need my weapons to fight against tyranny. You know what? If the time comes. Ban hunting. Just get outlaw hunting. Yeah. Screw you. We still need AR-15s. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Exactly. <laughs> uh, then they talk about Armalite in the 1950s. Okay. Um, four factors combined to transform the once marginal AR-15 into America's rifle. That's what AR stands for, America's rifle. First, the assault weapons ban expired in 2004. Second, and most crucially, President Bush signed the Protection of Lawful Commerce and Arms Act in 2005, the new law diffused efforts by cities and states to sue gun makers for the public health damages of the weapons they sold. 
much as Big Tobacco was forced to pay massive settlements for the... Gun manufacturers never marketed guns as something that you could shoot someone with and it wouldn't hurt them. <laughs> okay? So it's not the same thing as In Big fact, Tobacco. there's big warnings on there. Yeah. It says this will kill like, you. There's not a person who thinks like... I could shoot him in the face. It won't hurt him. It says I'll sew in the box right there. It's not going to hurt him. That never happened. Yeah. Okay. I'm like cigarettes. So no, don't compare this to big tobacco. Who was out there telling people that they were, you know, your doctors recommending cigarettes and stuff. Okay. Which totally actually happened. <laughs> An actual doctors recommended cigarettes, by the way. <clears throat> So uh, a third change gave such marketing, a patriotic punch. America was now at war fighting on two fronts in Iraq and Afghanistan, obeying the same perverse profit motives that brought the Hummer into suburban driveways, gun makers turned the AR-15 into a maker of patriotic consumerism. Even now, the phenomenon has hardly abated. There's a certain type of middle-aged man in this country who, uh, that, that part doesn't, the fourth change that supercharged the already soaring sales, the election of Barack Obama. A combustible mix of racial anxiety and fears of new regulation elevated the assault rifle into a totem of right-wing tribal identity. So I just want to clarify that numbers one, two, no, one, three, and four are all the government's fault. Number two, they say, is legal stuff, which they're just making this up because they're comparing it to big tobacco. Number one, three, and four are all the government's fault. Like I just told you, the only reason I ever think I need to go buy an AR-15 next week is because I'm worried they're going to be banned the week after that. And that's the only, like, honestly, without that, I, I create don't, scarcity I don't in know economic terms. Exactly. They do the marketing for the companies by creating scarcity. Scarcity is one of the most important things in marketing. And anytime you see something like, oh, there's only three left. There's only whatever left. Get this. You see that timer counting down on the, the timer refreshes every time you go to the website. Okay. They put it there to trigger something in your brain. To get, we have an option to put that on Unless our. Unless you're God, buying tickets, by on the our, way. yeah, <laughs> that's happened to me before. We have an option to put that on our on our God hates Feds website, and I don't do it because I find it to be so dishonest. Like it's a timer that refreshes every time someone goes to the page. Yeah, you're lying to people, telling them that they only have a certain amount of time to buy something. Mm -hmm. But that's what the government does with AR-15s, and so it works beautifully. So when the ban was over, people ran out and grabbed them because they could and because they were banned. They bought them because of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. We shouldn't have been in Iraq and Afghanistan in the first place. So that one shouldn't exist either. Okay, so you can knock out three of these four, and the fourth one's fake, by the government not doing dumb stuff. So, anyhow. Uh, Go on. That's, that's all I got. That's all I got for dumb bleep number three. All right. Uh, for that article. Number four is this picture that was circulating, and I did find some other photos to uh, corroborate the fact that this is going on. Um, it's a picture of two ladies, and they're in Israel, so I can probably be correct in calling these ladies, um, carrying what seemed to be uh, AR-15-style rifles. Those look like M16s. They do look more like... they. Now, I know that like you can get a very standard looking AR-15 that has, mm -hmm. you know, that it, it does look more like an M16. You're right about that. It could be. Totally, totally could be. Um, carrying those on their backs while they're shopping for sunglasses. Okay. And <clears throat> the comment here, and this is relevant because this had 7 million views uh, on this guy's post right here, where he puts in quotes, innocent Israeli civilians. <laughs> and so... They're no longer innocent Israeli civilians because here they are walking around in shopping malls carrying guns on their backs. To protect themselves. So they're no, you can't call them innocent. And by the way, the top comment says, what, Charlie? They never were. Also, once you bear arms, you're no longer an innocent civilian, let alone military-grade assault rifles. <laughs> military-grade. <laughs> What's that mean? The cheapest possible? I love... <laughs> I love how the I love how the um the anti Semites are, are just calling <laughs> themselves out. I don't know if that in this case it's just complete anti gun nuts because you're literally just saying that once you bear arms you're you're no longer innocent. Even if you've never hurt anyone. If you've got a gun for protection, a month ago people were running around, you know, putting people in ovens. Their pets' heads were being cut off, you know, crazy stuff like that. And now 
they're carrying weapons with them when they're going shopping. And you're just saying, well, now that you're carrying a gun for protection, you're no longer an innocent person. What an idiot. Yeah, real dumb. What a freaking idiot. This belongs in Dumb Believe of the Week. It, it should be in Dumb Believe. Look at that. Seven million views. Wow. In how many days? What day is it? In five days. <clears throat> I screenshot this yesterday. So in four days, seven million views on that post. That's ridiculous. Uh, okay, so that's Dumb Believe number four. Now we get to, I think we can do this on YouTube these days. I don't know, that because we're reporting a real story here. Yeah. And it's not the actual... Um, is this from NBC? Yeah. It looks yeah. like an NBC. So what what is happening now as a result of right. what we did in 2021, Charlie? CDC reports highest childhood vaccine exemption rate ever in the U.S., 40 states. Okay, number six. This was a fun a fun one. Big deal here. Pink. Remember Pink? Oh, yeah. Um, she's got a great voice. I saw her. She does have a great voice. Yeah, she and really she's, does. Uh, she, she seems to be uh, in good, like, I've seen her doing, like, the acrobatics and stuff, other shows and all that. Like, a talented performer. Yeah. Okay, and in this case, she's talented at performing when talking about banned books in Florida. <laughs> and so she made it a point... Like big, big, good workout music. Yeah, Tom songs. says good, yeah. good workout music. Pink. I can't name any of her songs yeah. right now, but I know that she's got a couple of good songs, I guess. Um, for the So the kids know this is an artist uh, that we grew up with. I saw her live when I was in the seventh grade, I think. Yeah. Yeah. She was opening up for NSYNC. <laughs> nice. So, uh, you know, way back in the olden times. Um, Pink. Will give away thousands of banned books at her Florida shows because you just can't get these books in Florida. The state has banned them. There's just nowhere you can get the books. In fact, there's Border Patrol. Last yeah, time I drove no. into Florida, I had to pass through. They check you for contra books when you're going through there. Security. Yeah. Make sure you're not carrying yeah. when you're going through there. And they make sure you and have Amazon a gun. looks at your location whenever mm -hmm. you're ordering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They send it you can't directly even to download an audible. Email. You can't even download an audible. No, audible's banned in Florida. It doesn't even work yeah. when you go through there. No, as soon as you cross the state line. <laughs> I went to that Florabama bar you yeah. know, when I went to Gulf Shores. You know, they're right on the border. Yeah. And it depended on what side of the bar I was on, my book would stop Dude, playing. they're so strict. I was worried to go into the Florida Georgia Line bar here in Nashville because I didn't know what laws they follow in that place. <laughs> you know, it's risky. Exactly. <laughs> risky going in there. <laughs> Moral of the story is some schools have banned some books for like kids. They don't want to see them having depictions of like anal sex <laughs> <laughs> or like BJs and stuff. Yeah. Okay. And some other maybe lighter things like homosexual overtones, you know, mm -hmm. some gay stuff, uh, stuff like that. I'm not saying that I totally agree with all of their book bans, but, um, Anyway, Pink is going to give away thousands of banned books to people who are at a show in public where they could still just buy the book. You know where she got the books? From local bookstores. <laughs> she bought the books from local bookstores in Florida. The banned ones. That's where she got the books. It says so. Pink. I can't. <laughs> she bought uh. books in Florida to give away banned books in Florida. <laughs> Pink has teamed up with the charity Pen America to take a stand against book bans in Florida, announcing on Instagram over the weekend that she plans to give away a thousand banned books at each of her shows in the state on November 14th and 15th. Now, she's not giving away a thousand different banned books. She's giving away a thousand copies of four banned books. Uh, did you know there have been nearly 6,000 book bans since the fall of 2021? And nearly 40% of the book bans in the last school year occurred in Florida, she wrote. In the caption of a post promoting the book giveaway, as a mom of two young readers, I can't imagine letting someone else decide what my children can and cannot read. They don't get to! You're, like, <laughs> the point is for the parents to be able to decide what their children can and can't read, by yeah. the way. Like, if you want your kid to read the thing, then buy, go buy the book. You can still buy the book. Like, she proved it because she bought the books. <laughs> in Florida. In Florida. <laughs> to support local bookstores. <laughs> In a statement, Pink Adam, books have held a special joy for me from the time I was a child, and that's why I'm unwilling to stand by and watch while books are banned by schools. It's especially hateful to see the authorities take aim at books about race and racism and against LGBTQ authors and those of color. <clears throat> um, another funny thing was, a follow-up in this, she posted 
Like, can you believe these books are banned in Florida? She posted the following are some titles of books that have been banned from schools in Florida because some of her fans, some people were saying, well, you want kids to see pornography? And she's been responding with, no, I don't, I don't particularly like pornography and I don't really want kids to see <laughs> pornography, but tell me which one of these is pornography. Okay. To kill a mockingbird. <clears throat> now, why was that <clears throat> one banned? That was banned by left-leaning people because, because, it, said the because N -word. it said the N word and had a white savior in the book, which mm -hmm. was problematic. But the, there's a bigger problem. Same with the hate you give. Same with Forrest Gump. No, the, the thing is, look at the look at the um, context out of that at the bottom. To Kill a Mockingbird, The Hate You Give, Forrest Gump, A Catcher in the Rye, The Hill We Climb, Girls Who Code, Atlas Shrugged, 1984, The Kite Runner, The Blue... You know what? Go to your shows and freaking hand out Atlas Shrugged to everyone. That's would, fine. Why don't and you go 1984. Ahead and do that? And 19, I'll chip in money for this, <laughs> yes. okay? Do it. Give, your, give all your fans a copy of 1984, please. The Kite Runner, The Bluest Eye, Wrinkle in Time, The Diary of Anne Frank, The Fault in Our Stars, etc., etc. I've never read that one but I'll have to look it up. Uh, this list has been proven incorrect. These books are not banned in Florida. In fact, some are on Florida's required reading list. <laughs> Fact check, uh, fake list of banned books. Florida books circulates widely online. This was going on, going around back when all the book banning uh, was happening. There was a list of all these super popular books. That... To see, she's believing misinformation. Exactly. <laughs> she actually, and here's my thinking on this, she actually started this initiative because she thought that the fake list she saw was an actual list of banned books in Florida. And didn't look it up. And didn't actually And neither did her team. Thing. Yeah. And so she has they, a whole team. So they started this thing. To, to give away books because she saw this completely ridiculous list of banned books and then was like, oh, crap, those aren't banned, which uh, she just found out a few days ago, I think, and now they're giving away these other uh, The Hill We Climb, Girls We Code, and a couple of the other books. So, um... <laughs> Where's the part where she says she bought them from a local book? Oh, What's that it? was on a... I don't think I actually... Uh, was that in the article? It was on the caption of one of the photos that I ended up taking after I made this presentation uh, last night. So let me just double check here. Pink purchased all 2,000 books from local bookseller, Books and Books. Each title has been banned in at least one Florida district, according to Pen America. Um, so just to clarify, when they said local bookseller, I did make the assumption they meant books, local bookseller in Florida but we'll have to look and make sure that Books and Books is a bookseller in Florida. So we could have been wrong on some of that. Um, still doesn't <clears> take away. <laughs> anyhow, no, no, it's still done regardless. Okay, now we're going to watch a video. Uh, time for this, and we are going to be talking about the way of the world. And there is this uh, video that was circulating. Got a couple million views here. Uh, Dr. Jebra... Fashe says, this is a response to this video, says the circle of life can be summed up like this. You're born, you work, pay taxes, and then die. Following generations repeat the process. This girl gets it. All right, so let's, uh, one minute for this video. Don't miss this video, Charlie. It's important. Work until we have to die just for the privilege of being alive. Huh? Like, we never asked to be born, but now we're obligated to do labor until we die. Huh? We have to work somewhere just to afford a house that we're never at because we're working to afford the house. Huh? Is the meaning of life to work and pay taxes and then die? On top of that, we also have to work to afford our vehicle to get to work in other places and afford gas just to get to work. And we also have to pay taxes for our roads to drive on to get to work. With the privilege of food, which we should just be able to have pretty much just work and die. Let's not forget about life insurance just in case we almost die. And then we have to work for our children to go to school to learn how to work so our children know how to work for their children so that their children can go to school and go to work. Like somebody tell me that this is fair. Like is it lazy to just want to enjoy life? Like why do we, why do we have to work? Why? Hey, Jebra, <laughs> look, I know you're listening to this because this is the type of show you would listen mm -hmm. to. I just want to talk to you 
personally and let you know you don't have to work. No. No, nobody's making you work. Don't do it. Yeah. Don't don't work. Do less. Don't get life insurance because that's actually for when you mm-hmm. die. No. Anyway, don't buy food. Yeah. <laughs> don't drive on the roads. Don't do anything. <sighs> this is one of those great Actually, her name, I guess her name's not Jeb. Yeah, this is the, yeah, that don't, those don't look like the same She people. put her watermark saw, on someone else's that. video? Yeah, I saw that. What the hell? Yeah, so I don't know who's that, what this crazy person's name is. Um, Here's here's the problem. She says, like, one of the first things she, she says what? about things is, like, we have to work to buy food, which we should just be able to have. <laughs> How do you get the food? Do you think food just magically pops up out of the ground like oh let's go down to the food patch yeah and pick up some of that food but you know what's funny you know know the old saying money doesn't grow on trees food actually grows on trees food does grow on trees plant yourself a food tree you gotta work it's (laughs) like someone has to plant the tree and someone has to make sure it stays in good shape and bears as much fruit as it possibly can i mean she could go back to the 16 and 1700s if she Mm -hmm. wants to you have to work to buy a car so you can go to work like no, someone should just work so they can give you a car. <laughs> so you're still saying people have to work because the things have to be created. So this goes back to how many years have we been saying this? What the socialist mindset is that I shouldn't have to work, but other people should have to work to supply things to me. Mm. But I shouldn't have to work. Well, what about that person who's making the car? They shouldn't have to work. So who's going to make the car? Well, they, someone else will have to, well, then that means they have to work. Well, if we all have the right to not work, then none of us are ever going to have anything. Everyone already has the right not to work. Yeah. It's just you don't have suck. to work. Go pillage through the forest well, hunt for your food. Costco says start a garden, but guess what? That's also known as work. That takes time. You got to expend some effort to go out there, you know, and that's what people used to have to do. And if you want to have... Like, if you want to have your ridiculous face piercings and face tattoos and, you know, do all your tie-dye sealing in your car and stuff like that, then you're going to have to go work and produce things of value so you can get things of value from other people that they're producing. Because she didn't make that piercing or tattoo or... A face or anything like that. Like other people had to produce yeah. this. The car didn't come with that tie dye ceiling. Which just trade. That's all we're doing. You make you have something of value that you provide. Some people that don't make anything, their only thing of value that they have is their time and their labor. And they can offer that. They can hit some buttons for for some time until the robot learns how to do it. You know? Yeah, and then and then this part the, the I think the real dumb though is this person, this Dr. Jebra. Fauche? Fauche? Fauche. <laughs> Fauche. I don't think she's a real doctor. No. Anyway, she says... But she has a white coat on. The circle picture. of life can be summed up like this. You're born, you work, pay taxes, and then die. Following generations repeat the process. This girl gets it. Thanks, Doc. <laughs> That's awesome. I just feel like you can't explain basic concepts to these people. Do you it's think- like... How do you get just? <sighs> you think people in socialist countries didn't have to be born and then work and then pay to their government or whatever and then and then die? You think that people before these governments or before we had capitalism or whatever as a system, you think that those people weren't born and then had to work every day of their lives to survive until they died at the age of 38 from old age, <laughs> you know? Like, I've only got a couple of years yeah, left. I know. I'm no wonder your there. shoulder's falling apart. I'm like a, I'm, yeah, that's what it is. I'm too let's revolutionary. Get, let's take it back you know? to like the American Indians. I would say that that's pretty good. Yeah. Like, because they didn't really have like governments, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, they still had tribes, still had chiefs. They elected chiefs or... It was the chief's line, bloodline, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, they got the chiefs. So they still had some form of organization. It, I don't know if they had laws, but I'm sure they, they weren't okay with you just killing people <laughs> probably inside not. your own tribe, mm-hmm. you know, for no reason. Probably not. So they probably had some form of law, some kind of moral code. But anyway, they didn't, um, I guess they didn't have jobs, except Each you person had to, probably had something that you they had to make did. clothes, yeah. or you had to hunt. 
or you mm-hmm. had to pillage mm-hmm. other tribes for their stuff, or you had to trade with them. You had to make it's, you had to make uh, cups out of horns, the, the or you human, had to to go down to the river to get water, like the, or you had to build fires, <laughs> or you had to take care of the children, or you had to also known as work. You had to garden. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you, you had just to, weren't exchanging money for it, so it wasn't as efficient as what we have right now. Which, by the way, you could still go do those things if you, you don't consider that work. Go do it. Then you can go do that. Still do that but in America, but that's still work. That's it, it is. is. It's technically still the work. Human, the human condition requires some type of labor to survive. Yeah, from the time you're a child, like you must expend labor, or you'll just die. In fact, animals are the same way. Well, they she must said, though, why can't we water. just enjoy life? <laughs> How are you going to enjoy it if first you don't all, have a bunch of slaves out there making stuff for first you? First of all, you have to define enjoyment. What does enjoyment look like to you? Some people enjoy being productive in society. <laughs> I wouldn't enjoy it if I wasn't being productive. I know. Everyone always talks about retirement. I'm like, I'm. I don't think I'll ever retire. Why? You're. You're. That like, sounds boring. Like you imagine if I come onto this podcast, I'm like, oh god, guys, I can't wait until the day where I get to stop talking to you guys. <laughs> Like, no, I'm not. A, I'm not talking about retirement. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Like, if, what do you like? In fact, I think st- st- statistics show this too. Like, after people retire and they don't do anything, mm-hmm. they it's die worse. much faster. It's worse. Yeah, because you don't have. We need problems to solve. The world just doesn't hand you things. It would be amazing if you could just lay there in a house that built itself with plumbing that built itself, and you, and that. The earth just magically brought the those Christmas trees from Little Debbie. <laughs> the earth just magically unwrapped that for you and placed yeah. it in your mouth. Mm-hmm. And then you moved your mouth oh, you <laughs> to chew the for time. you, yeah. you know? And then helped you swallow by rubbing. The earth just did that <laughs> for you. Yeah. But no, you, know? you have to expend some energy to do that. <laughs> okay, we got to move on um, to dumb bleep. That was all number seven, whatever you want to call it. Uh, number eight is just going to be Nikki Haley uh, because she's been extra dumb this week. And I will admit, I'm embarrassed that I called her in the first Republican presidential debate. She came out swinging like she was freaking Mrs. Ron Paul out there for like the first five minutes. And then it was all downhill from there. <laughs> I got prematurely excited about Nikki. Yeah. Okay. But she's still. She's she still she's leans authoritarian. A crazy neocon authoritarian yeah. uh, is what she actually is. Here's one thing we just talked about this yesterday, which is doing pretty well on YouTube, by the way. I forgot to tell you. Oh, nice. Um, thousands of TikTok users are siding with Osama bin Laden, who murdered 3,000 Americans. This is a prime example of how our foreign enemies poison social media to advance their evil agenda. <laughs> Hashtag ban TikTok. Stop giving the Chinese Communist Party the ability to influence Americans. Stop letting them read letters that people actually wrote. Yeah. Now, to TikTok's credit, they have been banning, they have been uh, removing some of these videos because they have terms of service against promoting terrorism. And so some of these have actually been getting removed. Like, not really, I don't want to say to their credit, but as a rebuttal to what Nikki Haley just said, like, they've actually been removing some of these things. Which is ridiculous. Personally, I think it's a good idea for people to be able to read this and understand why things happen. Okay, even if it was, even if uh, most of it was dumb. Yeah, that way we know not to vote for you, yeah. Nikki. Like, Thanks. Her, her, at this point, I'm like, she is a CIA plant. She she has to be, because she's like, oh, People shouldn't be reading about why uh, Osama bin Laden detailed all of our war crimes across the globe over decades. And sure, he was upset about Sharia law. Like he was, uh, you know, crazy when it comes to that whole part. And uh, he had he was several also, grievances. He had a lot of grievances. Some of them were correct. Some of them like you. Do you remember how many grievances we had in the Declaration of Independence? I forgot to mention the Declaration of Independence yeah. yesterday, but it was sounded like the grievances that were listed out yeah. on that. And I wonder, so what I wondered, I was going to mention yesterday, is if he meant to list it out like the grievances to the king, that kind of thing. Very similar. Um, so, uh, Except, you know, TJ was writing, you know, you sit up there in your high horse castle yeah. looking over across the pond at us yeah. and our, you mm-hmm. know, 
and tiny Os- sheds. Osama, Osama bin Laden was like, Durka, 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 <laughs> Muhammad Jihad. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Durka, Durka, Durka. <laughs> So, so anyhow, <laughs> that's one of the things from Nikki Haley. Uh, that's dumb. Uh, people should be able to hear these things. Uh, we've also got a few videos from her. Which one should we go towards? She is uh, upset about Vivek Ramaswamy and the way that he acted in the recent debate. You know why he acted that way? Because she's a woman. What so. happens? He comes out of the gate. He hits... <laughs> the female chair of the party. He hits the female anchor. Unfortunately, not in the way that he should have. (laughs) On the platform. And then he hits me. And I'm not saying anything. I ain't saying I'm just saying. But he might have a girl problem. (laughs) I'm just saying he might have a girl problem. Okay. So he didn't actually physically hit anyone. No. So he (laughs) hates women. Uh, That's why he's attacking them. Uh, And then she has a new social media policy. If you... I hate I hate this. Like if you don't want to play the game, don't get in the game. Yeah, she's You can't you can't go out there and be like, "Well, I can do the job just as well as any man." And then use the fact that you're a woman. Yeah. To say like, "Oh, well you can't make fun of me cuz I'm a woman." Mhm. Like mm-hmm. no, you don't get special privileges. If you want to be equal, be equal. Unfortunately, she wants to be Now she's like the media's pick for the Republican front runner these days. It seems like like the establishment's pick for the Republican front runner, even though she's nowhere close. Um, and do you really want your Republican, your conservative, your Republican Party front runner to be saying, you criticize me because I'm a woman and you only criticize the person who runs the Republican Party who does nothing but lose because she's a woman. And no. that's the only reason. And then I'm not going to say anything. But let, I'm going to say something. Yeah, but I'm saying it. <laughs> Maybe he has a girl problem. Not saying it, but... I don't, I don't know if the guy has a girl problem. All right, here we when go. I, um, no, he doesn't have a girl problem. He's rich. He can get over girls he wants. Isn't he married? Yeah, too? he's married. He's married. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, here's her social media plan. When I get into office, the first thing we have to do, social media accounts... Social media companies, they have to show America their algorithms. Let us see why they're pushing what they're pushing. The second thing is every person on social media should be verified by their name. That's, first of all, it's a national security threat. When you do that, all of a sudden people have to stand by what they say. And it gets rid of the Russian bots, the Iranian bots, and the Chinese bots. And then you're going to get should some the stability Jews when people put know stars their name. By their name so we know they're Jews. And they know their what a great idea. Yeah. What a great idea for the party of the federal government has been weaponized against conservatives to come out and say, we need to register. That you need to register everyone on social media. That way the government knows exactly who it is that's saying every single thing. When we have a government founded by people who used pseudonyms to write the federalist papers <laughs> in the first place, yeah. because they, it's just <sighs> good Lord. I hope no one's fallen for this mess. I really do. It's it's one big party. It is. Republicans and Democrats, they're the, the same. <sighs> okay. Um, you got Trump out there, free college. Nikki Haley wanting to register everyone. She reiterated this on that same show earlier, I think. Uh, they need to verify every single person on their outlet. because, And I want it by name. Because when what about you, Smug? Does he does he qualify? I, I've provided them with my government. If, if, <laughs> if Smug is on your driver's license, then and look, you can put so Smug. McLovin. So you got to yeah, <laughs> you got to put your actual name on God, and you got to verify which it is going to disproportionately companies. affect people of color because they don't, have, they don't have IDs. Have this is a racist policy. This is it is yeah, man. Oh hmm. okay. Uh, let's go on to the very last one. This is kind of a, just a quick pick for the end of the day. Cause I happen to see this, uh, going around the economist, which is a super old publication from the UK, uh, says that Trump presents the world's biggest danger in 2024. Donald Trump does. So this is number nine. The economist says former president Trump presents the world's biggest danger in 2024. The respected 180 year old British newspaper said a second Trump term would be a watershed in a way the first was not, and the fate of the world will depend on the ballots of tens of thousands of voters in just a handful of states in the 2024 presidential election. Like, how can that be democracy if only tens of thousands of people get to decide? I don't know. (laughs) The 
<laughs> the Economist said in its annual World Ahead Guide Thursday that another four years of Trump in the White House would be more dang- damaging than his previous term. China and its friends would rejoice over the evidence that Americans that American democracy is dysfunctional. American dis- democracy is dysfunctional if the people vote to elect Donald Trump in mm-hmm. 2024. It's not dysfunctional if they don't vote to elect Donald Trump. I don't know if you're, you know, picking yeah. up mm-hmm. what they're laying down. Then Beijing could easily miscalculate over Taiwan with catastrophic consequences. And Russian President Vladimir Putin would have an incentive to fight on in Ukraine. Yeah, because he invaded Ukraine while Trump was in office. Yeah. Yeah, you've got great evidence that when Trump was in office, the world was way worse. And you have evidence that he's backing off that now Mm -hmm. that Biden's president. Yeah, (laughs) definitely Biden is holding off Russia and Ukraine. That's great. Great idea, everyone. The greatest threat Trump poses is to his own country, The Economist argues. The moral authority of the U.S. would decline because America will have voted him in while knowing the worst. That is, that he is Hitler. I'm kidding. Uh, While pursuing his enemies, Trump will wage war on any institution that stands in his way, including the courts and the Department of Justice. The Economist... That kind of makes me want to have him in office, honestly, but I don't believe that he would actually He'll wage war against all of the corrupt... Now, Re- regulators that you know, aren't voted in. You know, I don't think he'll actually do it because he didn't do it the first time. They spied on his campaign and then he become president. And you know what he did? He signed on for a new agency, CISA, CISA in 2018 that has done even more spying. And we just learned probably because in the, in the room, they'll be like, we promise we won't spy on you yeah. anymore. If you just, if we'll, you just, we just learned from agency. more Twitter files type stuff that CISO is one of the ones directing some of the uh, censorship that was going on. And that was something that Trump signed off on after his freaking campaign was spied on. So, no, I don't think Trump's going to do anything, honestly. And it doesn't matter if he does. If you keep the institutions in place anyway, they're just going to get replaced with, with evil snakes afterwards. Mm. And it'll be even worse. <sighs> Regardless, 2024 is going to be fun for us on the podcast <laughs> shitty for us as americans you have so just, much anxiety just so right you know now. it's going to be terrible yeah. if trump wins it'll be terrible because the left is the most terrible vermin that exists on this planet <laughs> okay and we're going to have to listen to them talk loudly there's for four such years bad losers okay yeah. and if trump and right isn't much better if they trump loses then people on the right i don't know what they're going to do if he loses and he goes to prison that might actually be the Civil War time that happens because mm. they're going to try to stage a freaking prison break for him or something. Are you calling? They're going to try to break him out of his own house arrest. Are you calling okay. <laughs> for a Civil War? No, I'm not calling for it. I'm saying January 6th was a cakewalk of all cakewalks, which was already kind of a cakewalk. But uh, I think it to get way worse. Regardless, oh, it's going to be terrible. This is a tough vote. Yeah, so let's get the votes in, it's everyone. Dumb. We got to go. We got it. We got to go get those votes in. Get your votes in uh, while you're voting. You got Gavin Newsom, number one. Number two was David Hogg. Hypocrisy, number three, gun manufacturers choosing mass murder. Number four, the innocent Israelis carrying self-defense items. Number five, the vaccine ex- exemptions ticking up. Uh, number six was Pink giving away banned books that you can buy at stores. You looked that up, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, it's in, it's in Florida. It's a local Florida bookstore. It's in, uh, hang on one second. I have it. It uh, books and books is in Coral Gables, Coral Gables, Florida. Okay. Yep. I okay. So I would like to reiterate one more time <laughs> that she bought books that are banned in Florida at a Florida bookstore to give away to people in Florida that could still go to the same bookstore to buy those banned books, which is basically in Miami, by the way. Okay. Awesome. So, uh, so six was pink. Number seven was the uh, socialist circle of life. Number eight, she bought banned books <laughs> in Florida that were banned yeah. in Florida. Yeah, she bought them from because a bookstore they're not, in Florida because they're not banned. <laughs> number eight, Nikki Haley. Uh, number nine, Trump being the biggest threat to the world. Get your votes in, everyone, in the Dumb Bleep channel. Go sign up at the Fed Haters Club by going to GoodMorningLiberty.us. That's the new website Nate just designed. It looks good, man. Thank you. Good job. Appreciate uh, you. Wix is got us over a barrel right now they're the shadiest freaking company mm. if you're starting a, a company and you want a website i'm going to tell you right now if you can do wordpress or any squarespace whatever i freaking hate wix you know when we went to design this new website they were like oh hey we have this new tool like we've got the original wix editor for websites that you've used before and it's terrible and you know that 
Okay, but we have this new thing called Wix Studio. It's like more professional. So do you want to design your website using Wix Studio? I was like, okay, I'll try the new designer. That's fine. I'll do that. Well, I wasn't worried about making this new website because we already pay a yearly fee for a website for the original Good Morning Liberty US. And there's a button where you hit transfer this to this new website right here. Well, guess what? Wix Studio is not included in transferring that website. And so I built an entire website using a builder that is not included in our plan. And of course they didn't, it's not. They didn't mention that. They just said, oh, hey, you want to use this new Wix Studio thing? It's a new tool that we have. And they so I probably built the website. mentioned it in their terms and conditions. I'm going to go start a new website right now and tell you whether or not they mentioned that. <laughs> Let me see. Anyway, go to goodmorninglibrity.us. <laughs> That's the point of this. Or don't. I don't care either way. Uh, go uh, share, uh, share the show with a friend. Or not. <laughs> Again, I don't care. Vote. In the dumb bleep of the week, or don't. I don't really care. Either way, looks like uh, Pink is going to win this one. Yep. Uh, any mail-in ballots? We got to count. Uh, they come in tomorrow night. Okay. So, so this might. I'll let you know after I get done print them. This might change. Yeah. Um, leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcast or Spotify. And if you do or don't do all those things, Pink won. I'm calling it Pink. until Nate Pink. changes the vote tomorrow. Pink is the winner. Pink wins. Dumb bleep of the week. All right, guys, it's been fun hanging out with you this week and also terrible at the same time. Yeah, we'll I've be here Monday and Tuesday. Terrible fun time. Oh, we'll be here Monday and Tuesday. Yep. Next week before the turkey holiday where turkey we day. celebrate massacring mm -hmm. 90% of the indigenous population of America. Very, very important day. You want to give thanks for that. It's the only reason we're here. God. Yep. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, good thing we changed the... Washington we do it Redskins. special at my house too. We, you know, you know, they use the like the musket or whatever to kill the turkey, and then you the the key that everyone misses. You want to get your smallpox blankets out and <laughs> spread them out on the couch for when for when people come over, just you know? to make sure. Yeah, like that's you got to go full on on celebrating. That's the test. This, yeah, mm -hmm. I've been watching so many shows with Native yeah. Americans, and you know, I'm blackface <laughs> is banned, but Indian face is not. No, that's fine. You can put feathers you on can your put head. red paint on your face. That's you completely to. fine. <laughs> it's, it's totally fine. <laughs> God, this is we're definitely getting banned we on did, YouTube we, now. We went a little bit, <laughs> maybe a little bit too much for YouTube for some of these things today, but uh, it, it's fine. We are. We're gonna get banned. Screw again. YouTube. We. You know what? We've <laughs> been under the shadows. For mm -hmm. years now, and we haven't given up yet. Nope. There's nothing they could do besides send the FBI to our house <laughs> and put us in jail. I welcome them. Actually, we could still do this podcast in jail. Sure. Yeah. Just call in to someone who's recording. Absolutely, we could. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, we might be more famous then. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Are there any from jail podcasts? I bet I there know. are. There probably are. People have cell phones in there and all kinds up. of stuff. Yeah. Anyway, do all those things or don't. We'll be back again on Monday. Hope you guys have a good day.